telling that this year the Queen Quit coming to honor from the African Union. This year the first African diaspora meeting that they'll have you. And honor chilling, we got chilling from all around the world where they are this morning. The join me back together to be motherland. So this year the meeting coming live for Gullah Geechee TV one more again. The hand from the body of this year, Gullah Geechee Nation. So honor chilling, tune in and one more again, spend the day with me. We got plenty more to come in. Before we get into our business, let me first of all thank our wonderful musician. You can see we took long to start this meeting because I was enjoying the music. music. <laughs> so it was giving me some renaissance of home, so I had to listen to this music. Uh, my name is uh, Ambassador Brian Bowler. I am the permanent rep of the Republic of Malawi. Um, I am here representing the African Union Chairman, His Excellency Dr. Bingo Wong Talika, who is our President and also Chairman of the African Union. As I pay tribute to the African Union Secretariat and Ambassador Ted for making this day possible, um, Malawi has been a Christian country in, uh, in respect of all religions. I'd like to pause just for 30 seconds or so as some of our colleagues meditate and some take a small prayer in blessing our wonderful life that we all enjoy and privileged life that we have over here in the West. I'll pause for just a minute or two, for 30 seconds or so. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, I believe in self-meditation and kind of counting your blessings on a regular basis. Um, from our side, I am here today assisted by a very able panel and my humble role today as the chairman is to welcome you all to this very, very important meeting of building bridges across the Atlantic. Uh, this meeting has been made possible through a lot of hard work but also for your personal participation here today. And for that, we wish to remain thankful to you. And also recognize uh, uh, the large efforts which have been created by the Secretariat themselves in making such an occasion possible. We all know that our beloved continent remains extremely challenged. Yet it still remains the greatest hope and opportunity on this planet Earth. The challenge that we all have as Africans is to realize that potential. And a united and coordinated Africa would be a formidable force, not only economically, politically, but also would bring a formidable change on this planet Earth. With over one billion Africans now, the greatest hope is over 60% are the youth. And this is where Africa's greatest potential and future lies in. Also, this is the decade by the African Union pronounced for the women. And it's time, high time, that Africa gave its prominence to the role and permanent position of women in all forms of society. Africa's greatest strength is in its unity, its resources, but most importantly, is in its human capital. And that is why today is extremely important. Because each and every one of you has a role to play in the destiny of Africa. It is with great pride I sit with you here in New York, discussing ways to push Mother Africa forward and building bridges across the Atlantic. 50 years has passed for many of our African countries where independence was reached through the ultimate sacrifice of life. Where our leaders of yesterday fought for one reason or the other to liberate our countries from colonial suppression, abolishment of all kinds of inhumane activities, and the fight for apartheid. This was done with the ultimate sacrifice. I am born free. 
And when I say born free, because I was born after the 64s. And my part of the world, I was not involved in this fight and struggle. But that's when Malawi gained independence. So in my part of the world, they call us born free. But how historians tell me of the great sacrifices that have put us and some of you here, freedom fighters, people who have taken the front line. All of you have been activists and taken the role to fight for right and justice in one way or the other. And today we look at Africa. And the Africa of yesterday, the political relationships between the so-called colonial masters was on a personal basis where some of us traded our continent, our resources, our individualities for the checkbook. But this new Africa needs something more than that. And for the future of our Africa today, the greatest weapon that we do have is its human capital. If human capital can make the right decisions to march Africa in the right way, to produce the right leaders, to produce the right education, the right health programs, we have a future to talk about. I believe, friends and patriotic Africans, this is our calling. And I really would appeal, as young as I am in some of these things, that it is time that we took a positive and proactive step. The very fact that we're sitting in this room, I wish to acknowledge that you already have taken the first step. I am not naive that every one of you has a relative in Africa who depends upon you in one way or the other. I'm not naive to know that you are contributing significantly to the economies of our individual countries at some form or the other. People, your money is going back home, paying for education for relatives and cousins. And the fact that they say my auntie or my uncle is in America is the demand chain is so strong from us. But I would say that we now have to participate on a more focused and coordinated level. Our countries, for example, for me as a Malawian to fly to Senegal, I have to first fly to France to get to Senegal. I can't just fly across there. Before the 60s, I did not need a visa to visit these countries. Now I need a visa to visit these countries. So there's a big role we need to change and we need to participate as dignified leaders. And I believe the very fact that we get here today shows that the commitment is there and we are all serious about transforming Africa. The question I would like to pose to all of us is that the Africa we have 50 years later, is this the Africa that our forefathers have given the ultimate sacrifice for? Is this the Africa that would please the heroes of the past? The people who did the ultimate sacrifice. We put the TV on, we see the challenges that's happening in Somalia, in Sudan, and many other countries. Yet we are told the greatest potential of the world, the world's food basket, the world's resources, rely in Africa. So I wish this deliberation as well, and I wish that we touch on these important points, that we talk about building the bridges across Africa and the Atlantic. And I know the important role the diaspora has to play <coughs> with the future of the continent. I'll also appeal to my leaders out on the continent to allow the diaspora to play its important role in our destiny of our continent. I, for one, do know we have more doctors in Liverpool mm -hmm. from Malawi than we have in Malawi. Mm -hmm. Would like to get them back home, but also would like to bring them back in the position that they can continue their ambitions of bringing their families up and provide that education. So we have a lot of work to do, and I am mindful of the very important responsibilities we have as the diaspora. With those few remarks, friends and colleagues, I am really honored to be amongst all of you.